Hello, welcome to The Science Kid. I am your host, Quinn Friedman. And in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about agriculture. Farming is one of the most important industries in the entire world. Without produce, there's no food. And that means we can't eat. It kind of results to death. One of the most time-consuming jobs as a farmer is determining if the produce is ripe. Farmers spend hours and hours examining and studying to make sure they only pick ripe produce. However, with this science experiment, you will learn how to make a circuit that can determine if a piece of fruit or vegetable is ripe enough to eat. In this experiment, you will make your circuit on a breadboard. A breadboard is an easy to use tool that can test circuits without having to solder any components. In this experiment, you will use a single breadboard to make two circuits, one to detect the resistance of colors, and the second one to determine if a piece of produce is ripe enough to eat. For the first circuit, you will need a breadboard, a multimeter, plus some alligator clips for your multimeter, three jumper wires, a 47 ohm resistor, a clear red LED, a photoresistor, some AA batteries, and a battery pack. And finally, some colored construction paper in the colors red, blue, white, green, and black. First, take your breadboard and connect the 47 ohm resistor from the positive bus which sometimes has a little plus symbol on the top, or is right next to a big red line, to F13, where F, the letter F, meets the number 13. Next, take your clear red LED and connect it from J13 to J15, but make sure the long leg connects to J13, and the shorter leg connects to J15, as this is very important. Next, take your photoresistor and connect it from J16 to J18. And the legs are the same size, so the direction does not matter. After that, take one of your jumper wires and connect it from the negative bus, which is right next to like the blue line or has a negative symbol on the top, to F15. And by the way, the jumper wires can be any color, it does not matter. After that, take another jumper wire and connect it from F16 and take the final jumper wire it connected from F18. However, take the other sides of these two jumper wires and leave them dangling off the side of the breadboard. Now you are done with your circuit. Go grab your multimeter and set the dial to 20K. Take the black cord and connect it into the COM port and take the red cord and connect it into the center port, the one in the middle. Connect the two cords with the corresponding alligator clips and connect the other sides of the alligator clips with the two jumper wires that are dangling from the breadboard. Make sure the red cord is connected to the F16 jumper wire, and the black cord is connected to the F18 jumper wire. Connect the battery pack to the positive and negative buses. The red cord goes to the positive, which is the right bus, and the black cord goes to the negative, which is the left bus. Take your breadboard and tape it to a piece of cardboard so it won't move. Then, tape a piece of black construction paper around the photoresistor so that it only detects the color that is directly in front of it. Next, place a small cardboard box next to the breadboard, and then tilt the photoresistor and the LED light towards the cardboard box. And then cut out small squares of the different construction paper you have, and make sure they're the same size. Place the different construction paper in between the photoresistor and the cardboard box and detect the number on your multimeter. This number tells the resistance of light on the specific color. Check each color three times and record your results. You will see that one color has the least resistance and another color has the most. With these results, you can make the second circuit. For the second circuit, you will need a potentiometer, a diffused red LED, a transistor, a second 47 ohm resistor, 
and some more jumper wire, which is six in total. Plus, you will need one piece of red produce and one piece of green produce. I recommend using the same fruit or vegetable. First, disconnect the battery pack, multimeter, and the two jumper wires that are connected to the multimeter. Connect a jumper wire from the positive bus to F16. And remember, color doesn't matter on these jumper wires. Connect another jumper wire from the negative bus to A20. Then another jumper wire from E19 to F18. Then another jumper wire from G18 to G25. And the final jumper wire from the negative bus to F27. Then take your transistor and connect it into H25, H26, and H27. Make sure the writing on your transistor faces left because this matters. Then take your diffused LED and connect the long leg to E26 and the short leg to F26. Then take your second 47 ohm resistor and connect it from the positive bus to A26. Then take your potentiometer and with the pins on the right side, place them into D18, D19, and D20. Connect the battery pack back into the breadboard. Now to get your breadboard to work, you must rotate the knob on the potentiometer. Since red has a different resistance level than the color green, the potentiometer can be rotated so that the LED will only light up when red is shown in front of the photoresistor. The farther clockwise you turn the potentiometer, the more light is required to turn on the diffused LED. Do some trial and error until when you put a red piece of produce, it will light up. And when you put a green piece of produce, it won't light up. Because there are more than 570 million farms in the whole world, scientists are trying to find new inventions in robots to help make farming quicker and easier. The agrobot uses this circuit, plus some other circuits to detect if strawberries are ripe enough and are able to be picked. Also, the Virgo 1 uses the same devices to detect the ripeness in tomatoes. Think about how much easier farming would be if every farm had one of these robots. Who knows, maybe in the near future, all farms will be completely managed by robots. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Science Kid. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like, comment, and of course, subscribe down below. And this is my final video of this semester, so I'll see you guys after the summer break. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, science can always be fun.